What's good, YouTube? DM Game in here, guys. Hope everybody's having an awesome morning, afternoon, evening, day, whenever it is that you're watching this video. Guys, I hope that it's awesome. In today's video, guys, I want to discuss personnel and how this can help you elevate your gameplay to the next level. Guys, what you're watching in the background is just game film uh, from my SMU game against Liberty in my SMU rebuild. And I am in my third season, and I will say this. last That last season, we went undefeated, won the national championship. I was playing on All-American. Guys, I have since moved up. I haven't played it in the SMU dynasty yet, but um, I, I have another dynasty where I am playing on Heisman. And, guys, I will tell you, the Viren shoot is lethal with the right personnel. Guys, I, this game, you know, I think some people have issues with this game because they don't understand football or that they're so used to Madden style of football, which even though Madden is a simulation game, um, you can run any kind of offense with any personnel and do just fine. This game is more realistic. It's not true to real life at the end of the day because it's a video game. So there's going to be some elements that aren't are lacking in that aspect. However, this game is really close to real life in a lot of aspects. And one of those aspects is personnel. For example, I run the veer and shoot. You guys, the veer and shoot, for example, is designed to spread the field. It utilizes the entire field. If the ball's in the middle of the field, the receivers are going to be lined up outside the numbers. If the ball is on the left hash, you're going to have the receivers to the field still lined up either on the numbers or outside the numbers. It stretches the defense. And in regards to that, you need a few things. First of all, you need a quarterback with a strong arm. If he, if he doesn't have a strong arm, you're going to struggle in this offense because he's not going to be able to make those balls, make those passes, pause to the places on the field that you need them the most. And one, one concept that I like with the veer and shoot is it stretches the field. And in order to stretch the field, you need route runners or receivers that, that, that got a little bit of speed on them. Either have really good speed or have really good route running that can get off of presses, that can work into open field primarily, be really good at route running. And one thing that I noticed in my second year is I got some speed at wide receiver, guys, and I was lighting it up in the veer and shoot. Now, I have my favorite formation, which is the stack, which is what you're seeing on the screen right here. I'll run the option of uh, the RPOs out of this, but every now and then, or I'll run it a lot of times in a game where those guys are, it's, it's all, all deep, deep routes. And I, I got some GoDaddies, and I don't care what team you're playing with. They are going to get open at some point in time for a touchdown. And so long as, and, but one thing that I have noticed is like with Jennings, for example, playing with him at quarterback at SMU, he doesn't have a stronger arm as, as Stone did. And Stone could really throw the ball and lead the receivers, and they would just run underneath it. With, with Jennings, it's a little bit different. He doesn't lead them as much. And it does, it has affected productivity as far as me running that particular offense. Now, what I will say is this, understand your personnel. Guys, if you are struggling to get pressure on the quarterback, check your personnel. What defense are you running? If you're running a 3-3-5 stack, a 3-3-5 tight, uh, something like that with three down linemen, you need speed. You're going to have to have speed up front to put pressure on the quarterback. In, if they're running a spread offense, if they're just running the ball, you don't need speed from those linemen. You need stronger, bigger linemen who can hold hold a gap. You know what I'm saying? Understand that. If offensively, you're, you're trying to pass the ball a lot and your guys are, you're getting guys in the backfield all the time, you're going to have to adjust your pass protection for one. Number two, you need offensive linemen who are good at pass blocking. If you're just, you cannot go into recruiting and just pick the best player. Because one thing that they do in recruiting is they recommend you players that, yeah, that I don't even think they recommend you players that necessarily fit your scheme because they're going to recommend you players. If I need five wide receivers, they're going to recommend you five wide receivers. Now, as far as recommendations, they are going to get people who are interested in your program. Okay. But that doesn't mean that they're always a good fit. 
So me running the beer and shoot, I, I don't do, it depends on my personnel. If I have slower receivers, I will RPO more. I'll run more short routes. But with my Arkansas dynasty, with my SMU dynasty, I have some go daddies. I have at least two receivers that are 95 speed and above, okay? And it opens up that playbook tremendously. I'll just put it like that, okay? Understand your personnel. If you're running an option, you're going to need guys with high toughness. Otherwise, wearing terror is going to destroy you. You don't need the fastest back. Even in the beer and shoot, you don't need a fast back. I mean, it's nice, but you really need a back that can run between the tackles because like you're seeing on screen here, you're spreading them out and you just you you're running between the tackles. You see that throw right there? Preston Stone would have led him a lot further and it would have been a, a closer. But even right there, it's still a touchdown. Because number 19 and then Coats are on the other side. They some go daddies. They got some wheels. Understand your personnel. If you're struggling to run the ball, look at your linemen first. Look at their overalls. What type of linemen do you have? If you're running a lot of concepts where the guards and tackles are pulling, what is their speed? What is their agility? What is their quickness? Most of all, what is their awareness? Okay. If you're trying to air it out, run an air raid offense, what's your quarterback's throw power? What type of routes are you calling for your receivers to run? And what which receivers are running those particular routes? Because even with me with the veer and shoot in the stack formation, the number one and number two receiver actually line up behind. They're stacked behind the number two and number three. I mean, the number three, and number four receiver. So I put my go daddies in a position to where they are the ones that are running those fade routes. They're the ones that are running those vertical routes, stretching the field. And, and I'm going to tell you one thing about this game is you better have you some cornerbacks that can freaking press if you're going to press. Because if you're going to press these wide receivers and they're not good at pressing, they are going to get open. They're going to get open if they're faster. And it's some of them that even have the ability to, uh, I think, Cosart on SMU, my SMU dynasty, has the ability to uh, get off of the press. So if you press him, if I see anybody pressed on him, I'm automatically checking to, to, to throw him the ball. Because nine times out of ten, he's going to get off of that press. He's going to be wide open. I love this game. I really love this game. Is it perfect? No. No game is perfect. There's so much room for improvement with every game that we have. This is an amazing foundation to build off of, but I would have to really say as far as schematics go, this is one of the most realistic games we've ever had. And guys, you're going to have to play this game realistically. If you're passing the ball, you more than likely are, if you're playing on All-American or, or, or Heisman, you are going to have to adjust your pass protection at some point in time. Otherwise, you're, it doesn't matter how good your offensive line is, you're going to take a lot of sacks. You're not going to have time to throw the ball. You know what I'm saying? understand your personnel and if you want to comment down below with your your uh playbook or what scheme you're running i can tell you what type of personnel that you would be successful with and, and we've even done that on the channel if you go check out the playbook series now I, I don't have the pro pro style offense in there and i i think it's another one that i didn't have it this might be only two playbooks that i don't have in there but if you let me know in the comment section down below what type of offensive scheme you're running, what type of defensive scheme you're running, I can tell you how to be successful. Because even with SMU in this in this dynasty, I, I'm running a 4-2-5. 4-2-5, you have five secondary guys on the field at a time. Okay? Typically, you have two corners and three safeties. But, you know, in some systems, you can have three corners and two safeties nickel you bring in an extra corner that's the difference in the 425 you have three safeties now i ended up moving two of my best corners to start at free safety and strong safety and they have speed so we have been getting since then we've been getting a lot of interceptions in the secondary because those guys are able to break on routes because of their speed so understand those things guys Check your personnel while you, if you're struggling with this game, still check your personnel. Let me know what offense you're running. And if you want to improve on offense, let me know what offense you're running. I'll tell you what type of personnel you need to be trying to recruit and what personnel you need to be having on your team. And then, and then also guys understand this. Um, there's some plays and stuff that you can run, you know, in every playbook system, for example, um, 
my first year playing with SMU running beer and shoot, I actually switched and ran Texas offensive playbook because it's it's more RPO driven. I have more end around type stuff with the receivers and I have more shorter, shorter uh, RPO type plays because I didn't have the go daddies to stretch the field for a veer and shoot. I, I ran the veer and shoot. But what I found is the plays that I was running in the veer and shoot were plays that were hitting the receivers on shorter routes because we couldn't stretch the field. We didn't have the speed for it. You know, now I got the speed for it. I can open up that playbook a little bit more. But even in the very shoot, there's plays where you can utilize that. OK, so let me know, guys, down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, click that bell icon so you do not miss a single upload. Don't be a point extra, guys. Get out of the portal and become five star. Till next time, y'all. Thanks for watching. Peace.